This MMA 30 segment is powered by The Gun Store. Next time you're in Las Vegas, if you want to shoot a real machine gun, do it at The Gun Store at 2900 East Tropicana. Yeah, you know, the, the UFC encyclopedia that Tom Gervasey came out with is, you know, we're just out here at the uh, Barnes & Noble's promoting it. It's been a great experience. Uh, you know, to be a part of it, to be actually in the book, to, you know, at this point in my career, to sit there and, and, and now it's been, you know, solidified that I, you know, have a part in the UFC history. Um, you know, it's a very humbling moment. Uh, and I never get tired of really doing the signings. I mean, obviously there's times when I'm sitting at home and I don't want to get up to go somewhere, but I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a signing. It could be anything. But I usually whenever I'm here and get to interact with the, the fans, it's always turned out, for me, it's always been a positive situation. And in the 10 years of being a professional fighter, I've never had a bad experience. You know, when fighters, you know, and young guys are talking about the anxiety of dealing with autograph signings, dealing with media, and dealing with, you know, it's part of our career, so one, it's not going anywhere, so you have to get used to it. And then just use the same format that they use for fights. I just tell them, like, hey, you know, when you first fought, the first couple times you even sparred, you probably, you know, were nervous as all get out. Um, but the more you do something, it's like exposure therapy, you get accustomed to it. Plus then you can, you know, you can look at your performance in the octagon or in practice and, and critique it and build upon it. And the same thing with doing interviews. So I say just try not to avoid situations or avoid interviews because each one's a learning experience. You can learn from it, take from it. And the more you do it, the more at ease you will be coming and sit in front of a camera. Yeah, I love Walking Dead. Zombie, I've, I remember watching my first uh, zombie movie. It was Dawn of the Dead, the original. Uh, back when I was a kid, I must have been five or six. My, I have good parents, I snuck and watched it, but anyways, uh, it was instant, you know, like fantasy. In fact, I, I always tell my wife, if I'm like jerking around asleep, probably having dreams of killing zombies, don't wake me up, it makes me mad. Because it's like the best of all worlds, you're sitting there and you're getting to like blow people up and it's like a video game in real life, but without the moral dilemma of actually hurting a real live human being. So it's like, it's awesome, you know, it's the best of everything. Uh, I always sit there, and I've watched almost every zombie movie out there you can imagine, uh, you know, Italian zombie movies. I don't even understand what they're saying. I'm trying to read the subtitle. Um, bad ones, you know, some really good ones. Um, I, I love them all. I sit there and just constantly just fantasize about like, wow, how great would it be? In fact, I was actually hoping that Y2K would have worked out. I'm sitting there, I'm like uh, 19 years old, you know, 20, you know, just, oh man, this would be awesome if this, you know, works out, you know, prepared, you know, and I was disappointed. <laughs> I think Overeem is not going to do very well at all. I think that uh, strikers in general that do very well keeping it on their feet, that don't want to go to the ground at all. Uh, you know, I, I, Anderson Silva is a great example. I don't think he's ever shot on anybody. <laughs> he keeps on the feet, but it's his footwork is so phenomenal. Not just his, you know, obviously he's a very hard striker. You know, he's put a lot of guys down, but his ability to move and be elusive. Um, <clears throat> you know, Overeem is a very powerful striker, but elusiveness I don't see. And so when you have two guys, you know, sitting there and see who's going to go, well, then I think that favors the grappler. I don't think strikers are very, you know, uh, proficient in our sport unless they have great footwork to evade the, uh, the takedown. And Roy Nelson made another prediction that, you know, uh, that Overeem won't be facing Lesnar because Lesnar's going to pull out again due to illness, a reoccurring illness, and that I would be bumped up to fight him, and then Roy will, you know, gladly go ahead and take in and jump in and uh, fight Noguera. Uh, after he made that prediction, and it's on film, you can't dispute it, uh, of the whole thing happening with Shane Carwin. You know, when they first found out, we first found out that uh, Brock would be doing the reality show with the JDS. Um, he was like, ah, he'll never finish it. They're doing it to help get the, the TV show ratings. And then before they fight, you know, Carwin is going to step in. Because think about it, Carwin's already slated to fight on the June card, and he has no opponent, you know, or he has some nobody that no one knows who the guy is. and. You know, and he won't, I, I keep asking to fight him and they won't give him to me. And that's when the, the wheels in his head started turning. And, you know, that was a pretty savvy call. And, uh, you know, ever since he made that one, uh, I give him credence. When he started speaking, I kind of listen. This MMA 30 segment is powered by The Gun Store. Next time you're in Las Vegas, if you want to shoot a real machine gun, do it at The Gun Store at 2900 East Tropicana.